guys, how's it going? Today I'm planting up this massive metal container with flowers and I wanna show you, well, first of all, the flowers are beautiful, but I wanna talk about like how much soil should you fill a container with, how I address that in my own landscape. Um, this is all soil from last year, so we'll talk about that in a second. But my parents' garden center just got the most glorious load of flowers in. So I went down this morning and I bought a bunch of stuff and this is some of it right here. So our centerpiece today is going to be this enormous purple fountain grass. And I decided to spring for the big one uh, because sometimes you want instant gratification and because this is just one planter and not a whole bunch, I think it's worth it. And then the next thing that I saw were these right here. So this is a dahlia, it's called Delina Cancun. And this one will bloom all season long and it doesn't get super big. So 15 to 18 inches tall and it spreads out about 15 inches as well. Oh no, 12 inches, 12 to 15. So I've gotten several of these. This will be my next layer down. And then we've got a perennial, which I'm going to be planting out in the moon gar garden later on this season called Helen von Stein. And I really like kind of this, it's like a silvery green color and it's really soft. I think Benjamin will like this. A great plant for a sensory garden for kids. Um, so this will be kind of an, a foliage accent. And then my two spiller plants, let me grab both of them here. This one is a Super Bells called Strawberry Punch. So we've got the lighter pink on the outside and then the darker throat, which I thought would go with the darker dahlia really well, like they'd tie together. And then for a bright pop, we're gonna do this Bacopa called Snowstorm Snow Globe. So the first thing I'm gonna do before we address planting any flowers is the soil. So when you have a container this big, it really isn't necessary to fill the entire thing with soil, especially when you're planting mostly annuals because their root systems are never gonna make it to the bottom. So I get that question a lot. Um, typically with containers I can manage physically, I will replace the entire contents of the soil and start with fresh because I feel like it's good to start with fresh soil because it's full of good nutrients for your plants and they will draw from it eventually in the season. But for things this big, uh, it's really not necessary unless you have been dealing with any kind of insect or disease problem the previous year. And if that is the case, clean out the whole container and start fresh. But this planter did really well last year, so I'm just going to remove soil down to about here today. I brought my shovel out so I could dig that out, and then we'll replace the top layer, the top, you know, 12 to 15 inches with fresh soil. So this part, I've got some buckets off to the side here. I'm just gonna bring those in and dig my soil out real quick. Got lots of roots in this one from last year. Boy, there is a distinct line too that I'm seeing. As I'm digging down, the roots stop about right there and I'm down now to like fluffy soil. It almost looks fresh. That's good. All right, so now we have to fill it with soil and our slow release fertilizer real quick. I still do prefer that all of my containers are filled with all soil because I do feel like it helps with moisture retention and helping keep things cooled down because it gets so darn hot here. Uh, but I hear people using things like empty bottles or plant cans turned upside down in the bottom or big chunky bark just to take up a little bit of that extra space. And I think that works fine as long as you have consistent water to your pots and you've given them a sufficient amount of soil. So like in this container, I would say at least half of this would need to be soil in order for the plants to stay happy, especially if you're using a bigger grass or any type of perennial or evergreen centerpiece in there. Uh, most of my big containers around here, like the big black ones we have at the entrance of our property, they actually have a soil reservoir that's built up inside. So that container came with a smaller reservoir than it actually looks like it has. But I picked this metal container up for $50 at a consignment store, which I thought was a steal. It's a huge, thick, beautiful container. All right, I gotta quit talking and start doing more work. All right, so now for my continuous release plant food. This lasts for six to eight weeks and I always put it in when I initially plant all of my containers and I'm not even gonna measure, I'm just gonna 
put it in here. We keep them on a weekly water soluble fertilizer schedule as well, and that's how we get the best performance out of our plants. Just gonna mix that just into the surface level because we don't want it down too deep because these plants root balls aren't that big. I also do have my drips already set up to this container because this is where the container was last year. So the water comes up here and then it forks into three different one gallon per hour, these one gallons, these might be 0.5 gallon per hour emitters in this container, but I won't put that in until the very end so they're not in my way. So we're gonna plant our centerpiece plant first, which is our purple fountain grass. This one is a little bit bound up on the bottom, it looks like, but not bad. So we'll give it a slight tease. Isn't that beautiful? Got to make sure it's centered, though, before I plant everything else. Oh, my goodness. Talk about instant impact right there. And now I'm going to add in my dahlias. So I picked up five, which I do think I'm going to use them all. I'm going to pack this container out because these don't get super big and I really, I just want a nice full container and that's typically how I like to plant things. Gonna set them around, see what it looks like. So next is the Helen von Stein lambs here, which this is a zone four, I think. So one could leave this in the container if you wanted to, but I've got a spot picked out on the west side where I do want these to go. It's always nice to be able to use some of your plants later on in the landscape and not have to, you know, toss everything at the end of the season. Oh, mm, that's so pretty. It's nice to have a little bit of a weighty foliage accent to kind of ground the whole thing. And now for my spiller plants, which I do want to put two of the white bacopa, right like that. And then we're going to space our super bells in between. So this container is really seen from the front and then a little bit on this side. So I might grab one more bacopa to tuck in on this side, but this side is really not necessary to have another plant, I don't think, because there's a clematis growing right here, Brother Stefan which kind of, it grows up and shrouds this, this side of the container. So let me get these popped in here for the finished look. Now, if you run out of space, like if the area is a little bit smaller than your root ball, you can manipulate your root ball a little bit to slide things in and that's not gonna hurt a thing. My parents actually got a new supplier, a new grower for their Proven Winners plants this year and I am impressed with the growth. It's exciting to get plants that look like this. Oh my word, that's beautiful. Gah. Now the beauty of all of the plants that I've chosen for this container is that they all stay fairly small-ish. They don't grow like supertunias or ipomias um, that just get so, so big. So these should do really well together, even though it looks very full right from the beginning, which I love, they should intermix and intertwine and just be beautiful and happy. And they also have a huge soil reservoir and I am gonna go ahead and plant one on this side too, just so it looks finished. So the only thing in here that I might have to watch out for for size is the purple fountain grass. Now it's already huge. They do want to grow a little bit more, so I might be supporting it a little bit with some stakes later on this season just to keep it from laying over on top of everything else. And that's typical of purple fountain grass in containers. I typically do that with all of mine. I'm gonna be planting a heck of a lot more of this grass around our garden this year. Um, so I will probably be going around late summer and staking them up just for a little bit of extra support. And that's it, you guys. That is the planter. I thought you might enjoy seeing this come together. You certainly can scale this down into a smaller container size. I mean, using one Bacopa, one Super Bells, one of each of these, and it's gonna be a gorgeous, cohesive looking like blend of plants. Um, but I also thought it might be nice to talk about the whole soil question because we do see that question quite often um, about whether or not you need really need to fill your entire container with soil. And so like to reiterate, if I can manage the container, if it's a small enough container, I do replace the entire contents of the soil unless it's super big, um, in which case I'll leave some at the bottom unless I've dealt with a, an insect or disease issue the year before. And in that case, everything gets replaced with fresh. 
So thanks guys so much for watching this video. I hope it was inspiring to you. I hope you're having a great day and we will see you in the next video. Bye.